Welcome, everybody. My name is Jeremy Babiner, and hosting with me today is Beth Nickel from Arizona Science Center. We are currently in the third week of the Arizona SciTech Festival and are truly enjoying each and every event. To date, there have been over 115 events to reach an even broader community. If you missed any of these events or want to see them again, please check out Arizona SciTech Festival page on Facebook, and we'll be sharing the links in a Google Doc as well. During our conversation today, we will be highlighting several additional collaborators and the events that they have hosted this season. All right, so our guests today um, will all share about the exciting virtual events that they will be hosting. Uh, presenters for this session are Gail Berry, the Executive Director, Wilcox Theater and Arts Incorporation, Laura Hackett, the Education Director for Liberty Wildlife, Amy Estevez, Program Coordinator, Bisbee Science Exploration and Research Center at the Bisbee Science Lab. Uh, Wilman Vergara, the founder and CEO of Gnosis Health LLC, speaking on behalf of the Univision Lideras series. I want to thank all of you for joining uh, us today to speak with our attendees. I'm really excited to have Gail Berry here um, from the Wilcox Theater and Arts. Um, she's the executive director. So um, take it away, Gail. Thank you for being here. Hey, thanks very much, Jeremy. I appreciate the opportunity to um, be able to talk a little bit about what we do in Wilcox. Uh, you might be surprised to see the name Wilcox Theater and Arts when we're talking about SciTech, but our belief is that in Wilcox, which is a small place, that creativity is the thing that binds us all together. Whether it's art or tech or engineering, um, creativity applies to all of these kinds of things. And it's a, um, a use of resourcefulness and ingenuity, inventiveness. We have a lab here that uh, allows people to have the opportunity to see and use um, equipment that they wouldn't have in their, their normal situation, or for that matter, in, in schools. Um, next slide. In what we call our makerspace lab, we concentrate on tech and engineering. Um, science and math tend to get covered more in the schools, but the tech aspects and engineering are not so much. So as far as uh, students are concerned, we provide access to equipment and digital resources. We have a um, computer lab that's available. We have an assortment of digital resources. We have 3D printers, the laser cutter and engraver, 3D routers, software that allows you to design for the uh, 3D uh, programming. We also have a small, very small, uh, video and audio studios so that um, students can get involved in more of the presentation aspects of things, uh, doing podcasts or talking about the work that they're doing and so forth. Next slide. In addition to just having the equipment available, we have mentors um, during open hours and we also do a lot of workshops. Um, some workshops are open to anyone, some are aimed at youth, some are aimed at seniors. We've done how to use your smartphone classes that are extremely popular with the, the, the senior population. And, you know, it, it might sound kind of um, simplistic, but gaining that degree of familiarity and mastery with something that you live with and want to use more effectively gives you that level of confidence and comfort to think about using more of the technology that's out there uh, in other ways. So we do all kinds of workshops. We have done uh, digital media, um, how to use design software, how to design your own and build your own computers. So we cover a lot of ground in, in the tech area. Next slide. One of the things that we are especially um, have a lot of fun with is in the summer, we have a uh, tech camp. We, we call it robotics just because that name is uh, 
makes a connection with people more, but we really cover a lot of things. Um, we make all kinds of little projects that the pieces are out there and there's time for kids to develop their own projects and go forward with those. So there's education, there's the tools, uh, the support to be able to do those things. And there's a lot of fun in these camps. Next slide. Um, we think that for young people to envision a future for themselves in technology or engineering, they have to have some familiarity with it. It's hard to imagine yourself as a, an atmospheric scientist or something if you've never heard the term. So we're aiming to give kids familiarity with techniques and also to gain the kinds of to, to build skills, uh, the teamwork, the problem solving, even just the perseverance to keep going when that dreaded program won't do what you want or the uh, uh, little robot you're building is, is uh, going in circles instead of straight. So it, it's something that gives them the experience and the enjoyment of creating something um, physical in front of them. And last slide. I'd just like to, to reiterate that when we do these tech things, we allow the kids to use their imagination. Uh, the projects that they build are unique to them. Everyone might be building a robot, but no two robots look the same. So that resourcefulness and inventiveness and ingenuity um, is what we're trying to bring to the fore in making this space and capability available to the students. And that's kind of what I would like to uh, mention about our programs. Okay, well, thank you so much for taking the time to, you know, fill us in what's going on. It's, you know, I'm, you know, from watching from rain and, and kind of how it's got evolved over the years, it's been amazing how you've been able to really adapt the space and create these opportunity opportunities um, where you're at. And it's just a testament of what can be done um, anywhere in Arizona. So I love that you can join us. Yeah, and um, you just really quickly, you mentioned rain and they have been very important in helping us get the resources um, to continue to build this lab and make the opportunities available. Thanks to, yeah, thanks to you and the team for, for you know, doing the work and being here to present what, what you're up to. So. Um, and hopefully we'll have some questions um, in the chat later um, to, you know, talk a little bit more about this. Um, you know, I'd love to talk a little bit about rural and how it works in, in you know, when we don't have as much um, kind of critical mass of everything there. Um, the next one of the queue, Laura Hackett, the education coordinator at Liberty Wildlife. And I know that Laura has been doing a tremendous amount of engagement during the festival. Um, I see them all the time with, you know, some type of, an, you know, animals showing up, you know, just exciting things, and we're really happy to have you here. So, um, if we're ready. Let's uh, cue Laura to like, get rolling. We are. It does. It looks like my my first slide that we we're having the technical difficulties with before is is not coming through. But basically, it was just an introduction to Liberty Wildlife for those of you who may not know us. We are a nonprofit wildlife rescue rehabilitation center here in Phoenix. We've been around for forty years, so this is our fortieth anniversary. Um, and we're about to approach our busiest time of year. Um, spring is when the babies start popping out and we get more and more animals brought into our hospital. Last year, we hit over 12,000 animals coming into our care. So we're kept very busy um, on that aspect of everything. But another part of our mission besides getting animals healthy and back out into the wild is the educational aspect of um, appreciating nature and loving the wildlife and respecting the environment around you. And so we've always done on-site programming here for field trips, uh, public hours, we go out to community events and we go out to classrooms. So when COVID hit, we really hit a snag. We had a huge drop off. Um, we do still allow small groups to come here to visit us, but mostly all off-site programming was done. So um, we were really thankful to be able to join with the SciTech Institute and join into the SciTech Festival. Um, I've been a participant with my kids for multiple years, so I knew all about it already. And I'm just amazed at, 
at what you guys were able to pull together. And I'm so thankful that we've been able to be a part of it. Um, this slide right here actually was the, the very first event that we had. It was Nova's birthday on January 27th. Um, it was the kickoff for the festival. It also was my birthday too. So I'm proud to share a birthday with Nova. Um, and we had all the different mascots in town uh, come and celebrate. And uh, we had our, our domestic goats come. So we are supposed to take care of native animals, but you can't um, not love little goats. Uh, they're our lawn care here at Liberty Wildlife. So we brought them along to join in the celebration as well. Next slide. And then we had the opportunity to join in on Motivation Monday and Things Tuesday with some of our, our regular programming that um, my team has gotten really great at uh, presenting on Zoom and getting used to talking to the camera. Um, some of them were very nervous at the beginning, but as you can see, uh, they probably will kill me for some of the screenshots, but they, they've done a fabulous job of reverting to talking to a screen now um, and bringing the animals out. So uh, Motivation Monday, we had a uh, birds of prey presentation where I believe we had four different birds including this owl um I think a peregrine falcon was there a hawk and then on things Tuesday was the Arizona reptiles uh, a lot of people don't think of Liberty Wildlife as more than just birds but we do take care of all native wildlife so it was really great for us to uh, give people a chance to see that we do take care of more than just the feathered animals um both of these programs were fabulous we had uh a fourth grade class, I believe, on the motivation on the birds of prey one on that Monday, and then my daughter's fifth grade class signed in on the reptile class uh, on top of other viewers, and they were all throwing out great questions. Uh, people were really interested, um, and so it it filled the entire time. There was no downtime at all, and that was really great. And uh, I think it's been viewed a bunch of times since. Uh, go ahead and next slide. Then uh, we had another program that we've actually worked, I've worked a couple times with, um, I think Catrice and Jenny from Maricopa County Air Quality Control are on, on the program right now. Um, they actually had developed this great STEAM night event because most of us uh, educators were used to going to schools for STEAM nights and suddenly we weren't able to. And they created this great event. And so um, Connect to STEM and the University of Arizona SciTech Institute uh, took advantage of, of what they created. And it was so awesome um, to showcase all the different groups that came together and created slides and allow kids to have this virtual experience of getting to check out all the different programs. Um, and I think there were four of us that came live to talk to the students about the uh, various job aspects um, that how we got into the job, what we do on the job, all the fun questions that make you really think what, what's the funniest thing that's happened. Um, so it was it was a really fun program. Next slide. This was really exciting for us. We had a behind the scenes hospital tour. When you come visit us, you don't get to actually walk into the hospital. So a lot of people wonder what happens there. And we had this great CSO, Sarah, join us at the very beginning and work closely with me and Kelly Green um, to come get a tour herself with her family and learn a little bit about the hospital. And then we did a live tour one evening. Um, it was Field Trip Friday. And she she managed all the questions and was a great moderator. Um, she's, she was fabulous, just very well composed. I think she's in ninth grade, uh, but she's actually eighth grade age. She's just a real smarty pants and really composed, did a great job. And um, we got a lot of people really excited to be able to look into something that they would never get to see otherwise. Next slide. And then just this week, we had our career panel, and I was excited to do this because I've been wanting to do this with my staff for a while. They all get a little camera shy, so I, I drag them into it um, as and using this as the excuse. So thank you for that excuse. Uh, we had Megan Mosby, our executive director, Jen Miller, our animal care coordinator, and Robert Messer, who's our director of our non-eagle feather repository. And those we just had the opportunity to talk about what it is we do at Liberty Wildlife as the few paid members of the team and um, answer any questions about how we got there. And uh, we've since sent it out to some of our volunteers so they can learn a little bit more about us instead of just showing up for duty every day to, to clean and do the jobs that they have to. Now they actually know a little bit more about what we're doing behind the scenes. So that was a great uh, program for us to get to do. Next slide. 
And our final event is coming up for the Signature Saturday on February 27th. Um, we are open to the public, so we do get to have some people come physically come here and see the animals and learn about what we do here. Uh, so we are able to invite some of the CSOs to come join us for a VIP event. They're going to come towards the tail end of our uh, open hours, get a little bit of a, a lunch and some private time with some fly, us flying some of our birds. I'm going to have a hands-on activity so they can do something to help the animals out and just kind of appreciation for them and all the work that they've done. So we're excited for that final event. And last slide. And that's, if you have any questions for me later, that's how you can get in touch with us, learn more about Liberty Wildlife. Um, and I just want to take this chance to say thank you in, in making this presentation right here. It, you know, helped me see how much we've gotten to work together with uh, the SciTech Institute and, and really all the partners from this festival. And it's just been so much fun. It's been a learning experience for me. Um, and it's also really garnered a lot more interest in Liberty Wildlife. We were open to the public yesterday and Wednesdays are usually very quiet but we had uh, 28 people, which is like five times the amount of people that we would usually get on a Wednesday. And it was all young families. So I attribute that to some of the programming that they've seen here. So thank you very much. And that's my presentation. That's awesome to see, you know, to see that it's building interest, you know, beyond, you know, the festival. Our hope is just to get exposure for, you know, collaborating organizations in the state of what, what they're doing. Um, yeah. Really just, huge amount of effort in terms of bringing these virtual opportunities to the community. So thanks for that support. So next, we have um, Amy Estevez, uh, Program Coordinator, Bisbee Science Exploration and Research Center, Bisbee Science Lab. And Amy, I'm hoping I pronounced your last name correctly. Uh, we, I pronounce it as Steve's, but my family pronounces it wrong, so it's okay. <laughs> okay, um, perfect. And thank you for joining. Um, it's awesome again we get virtual all the way from the Bisbee Science Lab. So love, love what you guys are up to there. So um, take it away. Happy to have you here. Yeah, thank you so much for, for having us. And I just want to talk a little bit about what our organization is and what it does. Um, so Bisbee Science Lab is essentially underneath this bigger organization called the Bisbee Science Exploration and Research Center, uh, whose mission uh, is to foster the exploration, teaching, and practice of science for the development of scientific literacy by the public and the encouragement of the scientific inquiries needed for the betterment of our lives, which is really wordy. Um, but essentially, we're a STEM education nonprofit. Uh, we teach all sorts of different age groups, uh, and we teach a wide variety of scientific topics through a bunch of different kinds of programming. Um, next slide. Uh, one big project that we're working on currently at the moment is Sky Island Steam Express, which is our mobile science lab, which again uh, was largely funded by, by Rain. Gail talked a lot about how Rain was really supportive of their project. Um, Rain was instrumental in the creation of our, our mobile lab. So this is all uh, happening at the moment. We're currently working on scheduling different site visits, working on exhibits that will travel all throughout just our county, our Cochise County. Uh, in southern Arizona. So that's our big thing that we're working on right now, which is very exciting. Um, next slide. So like I said, we also have programming for the whole family. These are just a few of the programs that we have run in the past. Um, our Science Friday programming, which covers a bunch of different scientific topics. We're currently running it virtually. Uh, we also have Science Cafe series where we have people come in and talk about different scientific topics. Um, they do Q&As. Um, we have pie in sky astronomy events, which are currently on hold at the moment due to COVID, but we used to serve pizza and um, allow the public to use our high quality telescopes in our backyard uh, out here in Bisbee. Uh, and we also provide a variety of free steam kits to the public. So free kits for kids uh, that include a bunch of different activities that they can do at home. Uh, so these are just a few of the programs. We also um, are planning a, a summer camp program um, working on a Brains and Brews program uh, and a few other things. Uh, next slide. Uh, science exhibits. So we host a whole bunch of different locally sourced interactive heuristic scientific exhibits that are suitable for all ages. We just got this wonderful big minky whale in uh, and we're currently working on developing a science exhibit around that with uh, the help of our high school interns. Uh, next slide. 
uh, facilities. So we have public facilities um, that generally are, are open, but at the moment they're closed due to COVID. But we have a maker tinker space with a whole bunch of uh, supplies that kids can use to build robotics, um, to build things out of wood, to do all sorts of crafts. We have a virtual reality lounge, uh, which includes two different sets of VR equipment that the kids can, can utilize. And we also have an outdoor learning center uh, for people to use and be distanced, socially distanced and uh, with, with COVID in mind. Uh, and last slide. Uh, is about our high school internship program. Uh, so this is uh, one of the new programs that we're running. Uh, we have 11 high school interns that help out with planning our programming. They help supervise our outdoor learning center. They help with exhibit development and they have their own independent projects. Um, so that was what, just a little rundown of our organization and what we're currently working on at the moment. Um, things are liable to change uh, with hopefully the vaccine being more widely distributed. Um, but, but that's us, that's what we do. And thank you so much for having us. Right, right on, Ty, you had like one minute to spare of the time. Um, <laughs> but like, yeah, I, oh, go ahead. I got nervous when the time was counting down. So I was like, oh, I better speak fast, <laughs> but, good. But it's, it's just been, you know, amazing to see how much has come up from the Bisbee Science Lab. I think it like launched three years ago or even less than that, it's pretty, it's pretty recent. Um, we feel incredibly fortunate. It's it's really just been a few years. I think three years ago was the fe feasibility study. Two years ago, we were out on Main Street, and now we have this, um, you know, wonderful, uh, wonderful space uh, that we were able to utilize from the school district, and where we have all these wonderful programs that we're running. So I, we're we're very very grateful. So yeah, and so if we could get a little bit more on that too. But again, another great kind of node for another kind of broader rural and remote region. Um, as part of RAIN. So thanks for being here. We appreciate it. Um, finally, I'm happy uh, to introduce Wilman Vergara. He, he's the founder and CEO of Gnosis Health. Um, we're also privileged that he joined as a uh, board member for the SciTech Institute. And, and immediately, um, we put him to work on, on a, um, a collaborative project he was passionate about, which was really building more um, exposure about Hispanic leaders in STEM. Um, and he helped to work through a partnership that we, we have been building with Univision to create a fully um, Spanish, ver you know, Spanish immersion version um, a STEM series on Univision. So Wilman can give you a lot more details on that. I'm really excited to have him here today. So take it away, Wilman. Awesome. Uh, thank you, Jeremy, or gracias. Uh, buenas tardes, or good afternoon, right? <laughs> uh, my name is Wilman Vergara, and again, very excited to uh, be a part of this project. Um, you know, one of the things that essentially uh, Give me one quick second. So sorry. Yeah, uh, one of the things uh, you know that interesting about this is one of, is the passion that I have for science and leaders in STEM, right? And the lack of representation within the, those fields, because um, when you think of STEM or we think of technology companies, medtech, whatever the case may be, um, you don't you don't think of somebody that looks like me, right? I mean, you, you think of uh, folks like the Zuckerbergs or the Steve Jobs or the Bill Gates of the world. And so this is something that I, I want to change. And so therefore, um, you know, Jeremy presented me with this opportunity to work with Univision um, and the SciTech Institute for this festival. And it was great. Um, the next slide, please. Awesome, perfect. So uh, we actually have two um, sessions under our belt with the third one uh, premiering today at 3 p.m. on Univision's Facebook Arizona's uh, page. Um, so that way you guys can tune in and watch three um, distinguished NASA experts. We actually have an astronaut, Jose Hernandez, um, who's been up in the space station as well as Dr. Jose Moray, Eisenhower Fellow, and, and sits on the board of Hyperloop. And then um, uh, Marile Robles Colon, who is a NASA scientist, project scientist out of Langley. Um, so we do have the science of COVID under our belt. Um, you know, we had the discussion with two epidemiologists uh, who were actually were friends of mine um, out of Texas and out of DC, um, as well as a, uh, a, a teacher out of the Roosevelt School District to help with the messaging, um, the science of, of, of sport or la ciencia del deporte. Um, you know, something that I was able to participate in personally, being a former soccer player turned, uh, you, know, you know, med tech entrepreneur, so to speak, right? 
And so uh, it's one of those things where it was, I was very proud to share the stage with a good friend of mine um, who, who is currently the physical trainer for the Colombian national team. Um, you know, he's multiple World Cups. He's been everywhere. He was at the World Cup 2014 in Brazil, World Cup 2018 in Russia, um, you know, and, and, and 2010 in South Africa. And then also, you know, just, just a, huge, a huge career out of that. And then today is, is the science of space or La Ciencia del Espacio. Um, which is one of those things where um, a lot of kids like myself growing up, you know, just like I confessed to Jose, um, I wanted to be an astronaut. I wanted to be in space. My, my first love is astronomy. And I have the telescope, the very expensive telescope to prove it <laughs> at that. Um, and so it's one of those things where uh, by, by hoping to see kids, um, you know, seeing Jose speaking Spanish, speaking the language, speaking their, their native tongue, and that he was able to, you know, the son of, of, of farmers and immigrants out of California, uh, be, to be able to go up and into the space station is amazing and an amazing journey in and of itself. So that will be today at 3 p.m. Um, Arizona time. So you guys can tune in and ask your questions. And then lastly, we have uh, Mujeres en Tecnología or Women in Technology, uh, where we have several women um, who, who are, are making waves within the te technology space, right? And so I wanted to essentially give um, them a platform and highlight the, the success and the trailblazing that they've done and that this is an option, you know, for uh, little girls and women out there who are seeking a career in STEM. So, um, you know, just came up with these categories and, and whatnot. I mean, if you guys have any questions, you know, feel free, you know, to put them in the chat. I'll be more than happy to answer. Uh, you do have, I do have about two minutes left. So I'll be, you know, more than happy to be able to uh, address anything that I may have missed or that you guys would like to know more. I was right on. So we, um, or you got, you still got a minute left. So <laughs> <laughs> anyone have any questions? Yeah, anything right. I, can, I can, I can help you guys out with it. And this is a very exciting opportunity that Univision has provided us, um, you know, a great platform. And we're hoping that once it's successful, we can expand this and perhaps maybe even go national. Perfect. So yeah, thanks Hope for starting to post some questions. So please feel free everybody to start posting. Um, yeah, so Hope's question uh, is for the Bisbee and Wilcox areas. Um, how are you engaging the community with COVID? And it sounds like some closures in your area. So maybe start with Wilcox. Um, we've, we haven't very um, taken the, the precautions in our facility. We have reduced the number of people who can come at the same time. And of course we clean uh, afterwards. So we have been able to continue with the open lab um, activities and we, we do have our regular monthly project um, on hold uh, until things settle out a little bit more. Um, but we are planning a summer camp as usual this year and we are talking about doing a rocket camp in addition. So we're, we're hoping that by summertime we'll be um, full bore again. And then did you want to add anything from the, you know, Bisbee Science Lab, Amy? Yeah, so, um, you know, as I mentioned, we are giving out free STEAM kits, and those are things that um, kids can take home and, and do from the safety of their home, because a lot of our schools um, were closed for a long time. They just recently opened up to, to a hybrid model. Um, we also have the Outdoor Learning Center, where we do run some limited programming, where people can be distanced in, in an outdoor environment um, and still, you know, wear their masks and everything. So we've been able to transition in that way. And then, um, you know, as Gail mentioned, she, they're planning a summer camp. We uh, are putting a lot of our energy into planning future programming. So our mobile lab, uh, we're scheduling dates to go visit all of these different sites in Cochise County. Uh, so a lot of planning and some uh, limited and outdoor programming. All right, perfect. So Allison uh, from the Arizona, Mu so the Natural History Museum uh, was asking, who on the call is planning in-person summer camps? Maybe that's something people can post in the chat if you if you are planning with your orgs to do summer camps and maybe what you're thinking. Um, one, one thing I'm kind of, I think there's some, you know, one common thread amongst the presentations is about broadening participation, you know, both in rural communities and, you know, Hispanic, Spanish speaking communities. What lessons do you think you know, could be transported to other similar communities in terms of broadening access and participation from what you've learned in your work. Uh, 
Uh, to me, it's really important to have strong community contacts. So, you know, reaching out to specific teachers, um, principals, community leaders, and having them uh, reach out to their contact base has been really, really helpful um, because us just trying to do all of the outreach um, by ourselves has been really difficult um, in a rural community. So I would say strong, strong community ties helping with, with outreach has been really important. Uh, I could pretty much second that. Um, Wilcox, of course, has its own school system, but there are also outlying smaller schools. Bowie, Benita, Pierce, Sunsites all have their own um, schools, uh, many of them just K through eight. And those schools, uh, especially that are 20 and 30 miles away, um, actively work to bring interested kids to our facility um, on a bi-weekly or monthly basis when, when we can do those things uh, because transportation in our area is a real issue. We would love to have ways to bring kids in. It's even hard with summer camps with, um, you live on a ranch um, 45 minutes away to have mom or dad bring you in for a, a day's worth of camp and then what does mom or dad do for the rest of the day? So it's it's a transportation is an issue that we would like to have a, a magic solution to, but we haven't figured that one out yet. Mm -hmm. We need a transporter. Well, I guess Zoom is the closest thing on that way, right? <laughs> so Laura or Wilman, anything else to add on that one? Nothing to add on my part. Sorry, I'm just answering all these questions I'm getting from the direct messages. <laughs> yeah, they're kind of keeping you keeping you engaged there. <laughs> well, thank you, everyone. I appreciate it. I'll get to your questions uh, individually because I'm also getting direct messages. So thank you for the engagement. I would love to work with each and every one of you who has reached out to me, but I'll, I'll, I'll submit my contact information um, for everyone to see. So that way you guys can, can, can write to me. And Laura, is there anything else that you wanted to add? Um, I just, you know, actually going off of the, the whole transportation issue and getting people here, I think um, that's always been one of our, our downfalls too. You know, we have such a big county here and um, getting out to people is tough even for our team, you know, driving animals out there and then the transportation issue with them coming out here. So um, like Gail was you saying, you know, getting people here is tough to, to get hands on and see everything. So Zoom has kind of become uh, the way of the future for us. And um, it's been trying to get some of my team on board with that. Um, so the more we do, I see the, the more comfortable they are with that. And I, I feel like we've had more of a reach and they've gotten more comfortable with it. So, you know, we'll definitely be using this even when we can come back to in-person stuff more. All right, I wanna um, send it over to Hope. Um, if she's got any final questions, then to take us into the next step, the next phase of our conversation. So thank you everybody for the, yeah, for the awesome talks. We do appreciate the time and uh, yeah, over to Hope. All right, thanks, Jeremy. And thank you to our presenters. It's been, Gail, I love seeing the creativity and all of the resources that you're bringing to the community um, in Wilcox. I just think that's just absolutely wonderful and they must just really enjoy that. I do have a question for you. What was that robot that was at the end of your presentation with the big eyes? What were they, what were you making there? It, it's just a little robot with um, powered and you can control it from a, a program on your phone to just, just runs around and beeps. <laughs> what kind of program are they using on their phone? Uh, you know? uh, it's all right, if you don't I, remember, I just was like, so cute. What was that? I'm sorry, I don't remember. That's okay. It was just so cute. I was like, oh my gosh, that looked great. So, well, thank you so much. That was great to see all the work that you're um, that you're doing in Wilcox. And then Amy and Bisbee, same thing. What a great achievement. I love that you're already having interns um, with your students. I'd like to know, how did you select your interns? Um, I know that each of us on this call, a lot of us take in interns. I'd love to know how you selected your interns um, and how did you come up with those jobs for them? So this is the first time we've run an internship program. Um, as Jeremy mentioned, we're a pretty new organization, just a few years. So um, I had reached out to the high school principal, um, uh, Darren, and 
and asked him to uh, kind of network for us uh, to, to select these interns. And then we essentially did an open call and had a bunch of people come in. And um, we took in as many of the interns as we could. So we got uh, I think 15 uh, kids wanted to be interns with us. We were only able to uh, handle 11 at this time, uh, you know, with funding and, and staffing and everything. Um, but it but it was open. Uh, and then uh, in terms of, of what they do, uh, we have a lot of kind of side projects here at the lab that uh, need to get done. We're a new organization, so we have a ton of stuff like building capacity uh, that, that you know, can be taken over by interns. So I essentially have a running list of side projects of, that they can take on and uh, make their own. That's awesome. Well, thanks for doing that for your community and for your high school students. I know we have um, four interns or high school interns ourselves at SciTech Institute and uh, they keep me very busy. So 11 um, is impressive. <laughs> and I used to be a school teacher, you know, so, but yeah, four is, Four keeps me busy. So that's awesome that you have so much great work for them to do and meaningful work, right? That gives them experience, but also connects them to the science, um, you know, world and education. So I think that's just awesome. So thank you for that. And then Laura, as always, thank you so much. You've just been so awesome. Like this whole um, festival, just jumping in and just doing all these different events. We're just so appreciative for you and all the work that you and your team are doing. So thank you, thank you, thank you. No worries, you guys have made it really easy. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and then Wilman, thank you again for posting um, where you can go on Facebook. If you were wondering where the that video series is, it looks like uh, might be on the um, Univision Arizona Facebook page. So you can check those out um, there as well. So I just wanna say thank you again to our presenters. I am going to um, open up the breakout rooms if you'd like to stay and just go in there. I didn't do any guiding questions this time since we're talking about festival, but if you'd like to go into the rooms, connect with one another, share some of the things that you're doing, um, listen to what others are doing, um, maybe talk about you know what you wish you could do or any resources that have made your um, the, the um, events that you have been doing um, successful. You can take that time. We'll go in there for maybe 10 minutes or so. You can chat and connect with one another if you'd like. I just did breakout rooms, so we'll keep it kind of small and people can jump in there as if they'd like and just connect. And I'll be in the um, main room and I'll close those in about 10 minutes and we'll come back and share out. Sound good? All right. Well, thank you all again for being here. We always appreciate you. And I will go ahead and open breakout rooms. Thank you.